appreciate you being here with us. Um, I thought Abdus was going to be on the call this morning. I don't see him. I was going to have him do a quick update just on the budget and on some of the other programs. If he does come on, I will, I'll have him do that. Um, we are looking to do a post-budget um, virtual town hall with the Minister of Finance. It was booked for Monday, but we had a little bit of a scheduling hiccup. So we're trying to reschedule that um, for either later this week or early next week so that we can have a chance to ask some of those questions about um, some of the programs and, and pieces that were handed down. Uh, from the Chamber's perspective, we have a couple of things coming up. One of them is the YR Biz Recovery Series that we've been doing for the region. Um, this Thursday at noon, we've decided to kind of switch our programming around given the new um, framework uh, that came down last week. So we're going to have public health officials, business, HR, um, basically everybody can come and ask their questions. We've done these sessions before. They seem really well received by the businesses because I know there's still some confusion around what are the regulations and and um, how does that framework work. So we're going to be um, tackling that at uh, this Thursday's uh, meeting. So you can join us for that on Zoom. And uh, our Business Excellence Awards are coming up November 25th. So a uh, virtual celebration, which I think should be uh, a lot of fun this year, not the way we were hoping to do it, but our, our events team has a really great plan in place and we're going to have a lot of fun with it. Um, so that's November 25th, starting at 630. Um, the other thing that's come up is the town has is launching November 16th. I don't know if you saw, they've been putting it out on social media, a choose local site for businesses. So you can go on and claim your site. We really want to encourage everyone um, to shop local this year and just really rethink how you're shopping and what you're doing in that um, term. And in that uh, area that the chamber is also going to be launching a shop local gift guide, a holiday gift guide. So it's gonna have things like gifts under $10, shopping, um, stocking stuffers, things for your pets, experiences even a not-for-profit area where you can give back with your gifts. So um, we will be launching that shortly. I'll give you the, I don't know if I should, Jen, can, Jennifer, can I give out the, the site or no, too early? A um, little too early. It will be this <laughs> okay. week. So yeah, I won't yeah. tell you what the site is, but stay right. tuned for that because Wednesday. it looks amazing. Addison Marketing put it together for us and it, it looks amazing and it's got some really great ideas. And for many of them, you can just click and buy. So we just want to make it just as simple as Amazon, but all local and beautiful. Um, so look for that. We'll be announced, that'll be coming out shortly. So I won't spill the beans. Um, and then the other sort of personal request is uh, I'm asking people to join our AGM December 10th. Um, so our member businesses, I, we need you there. Your voice needs to be heard. We need your vote. So um, we'll have some you know, giveaways there as well, some prize draws. So if I can't guilt you into it, then come for the, the chance to win prizes. So, um, so required? <laughs> yeah, December 10th at <laughs> noon. Um, and then the only other thing I wanted to announce is that the chamber launched a radio show with our own Jennifer Buchanan as host back to her broadcasting days. It's called Down to Business and it's on Wednesdays at 6.30. Is that correct? On six, Chop FM. 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Yeah. There you go. So tune in at 6.30 and you'll miss it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think that's pretty much all of the, the announcements. Do we have? Abdus, we don't. Um, uh, Abdus just text me, so um, Adam's going to hop on in a couple of minutes. Okay, perfect. Yeah. In the meantime, Don uh, Gallagher Murphy, I see that you're on the line. Um, did you want to update us with anything from Minister Elliott's office? You're on mute. Good morning. Sorry about Good that. Good morning. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. It's just if there is anything you wanted to, to bring up. Um, well, we're looking to confirm the uh, budget meeting for later on this week, uh, which will be great with um, uh, 
MPP Christine Elliott, our Deputy Premier, Minister of Health, and uh, uh, Minister of Finance Rob Phillips. And uh, that will be great because one of the items I have here is the Ontario budget, uh, which everybody knows was um, announced this past Thursday. Uh, there's a lot in there for businesses as well as for health. So it will be great to have both the Minister of Finance and the Minister of Health uh, to speak about that in detail uh, with the Chamber members. Um, other than that, I'm sure everybody's aware of the response framework and how York Region has moved into Orange Restrict. Um, that came into effect this past Saturday, so I'm sure everybody's aware of that. Um, what I would mention is about the, I'm not too sure if everybody's aware of this, um, Ontario launched an innovative uh, solution to improve uh, long-term care in York Region, and that is um, via paramedicine. So what you're going to be seeing uh, coming up, there's five communities across the province, York Region is one of them, and uh, paramedicine is basically using our York Region paramedics to help serve our um, aging community who are still living at home and on a wait list to get into a long-term care home. So it's a uh, innovative approach on how we can also end hallway uh, healthcare medicine uh, by utilizing uh, community uh, paramedicine uh, so to support um, our uh, seniors before they move into a long-term care home. So that was just uh, announced about one week ago. The other thing that I think is important is the Ontario made phase two launch of a new Ontario made consumer directory. Uh, the Canadian manufacturers and exporters with the support of the Ontario government uh, launched a new Ontario made uh, consumer directory and Ontario's manufacturing uh, sector um, obviously, as we know, is an economic engine of Canada, and this uh, guide is going to make it easier for shoppers to find all made in Ontario products while supporting local businesses and manufacturers. And there is a website, www.supportontariomade.ca. Um, other than that, we announced recently the new COVID-19 resilience infrastructure stream. A news release was just issued last night to the local media and happy to say that in uh, York Region, just over $12 million will be going to York Region uh, to assist with infrastructure uh, projects to um, get jobs going and get projects going. Um, for a new market alone, there was 526,000. For Aurora, there was 519,000. Uh, so that was just uh, recently announced. And those are my um, most recent updates. Thank you. Thank you, Don. And I think now we don't need Adam to give an update because you were so thorough, which I, <laughs> which I appreciate. Um, and the other piece, uh, and I do want to say that we welcomed many of, of the pieces that came down on the budget. So I look forward to, to the meeting with uh, Minister Elliott and, and Minister Phillips. Very good. Perfect. I would now like to turn it over to Pat Lusink, General Manager of the Best Western Voyager Place. Um, Best Western has been a great supporter and they support our breakfast series and, uh, and I will turn it over to Pat. Thank you, Tracy. Good morning, everyone on this beautiful summer day. Uh, we've had a few <laughs> summer days the last, uh, what, last, what, four or five days and uh, I'm not complaining. And the skies have been amazing. The sunsets, the sunrises. Oh my gosh. Anyways. Um, I'm here to introduce uh, Doug Bundock from uh, uh, Benson Kearley, and uh, I would just like to say that he's been in the insurance industry for over 40 years, so that makes him, what, 50 or something like that? I don't know. <laughs> uh, anyways, he <laughs> vowed that he would stay no more than two years 
when he joined his father's insurance brokerage, but obviously that didn't happen. So he's now a seasoned insurance professional and Doug joined the BKIFG team in uh, 2017. His real passion for commercial insurance stems from the relationships he is able to build with his clients. His favorite role is to mentor the younger generation of insurance brokers as he finds just as much pleasure in seeing those coming up through the ranks succeed as he does in his own business. As chief operating officer, Doug also looks after the private client group within BKIFG. So take it away, Doug, thank you. Thank you, Pat. It's, uh, it's great to be here. It's, uh, it is still summer, which is, is pretty incredible. We'll take it, uh, my birthday is actually in a couple of weeks. So to have it uh, 20 degrees around my birthday seems a little bit crazy, to be honest with you. Um, I'm, a, I'm actually a winter guy, I don't mind the snow. So, um, but we won't wish that on us too soon. So I wanna to talk today a little bit about uh, creating awesome. Uh, a few years ago, um, I was trying to remember exactly when, I think it was five or six years ago, I attended a seminar put on by a company called The Art Of. And uh, this was back when, remember the old days when we used to be able to go to seminars and we could actually congregate in places? Um, but they have seminars on leadership and marketing and sales. And Neil Pashrika was one of the speakers and you may not recognize his name, but Neil was the creator of, I'm just gonna hold it up here, The Book of Awesome. And uh, Neil actually has several books now. And uh, he uh, has taken this, basically the whole word awesome, I'm going to say to another level. Um, most of his books are bestsellers. And if you haven't read them, I'd encourage you to just take a look. So the seminar got me thinking a lot that day. And I, three questions really came out. And it says, where does awesome come from? What makes something awesome? Sometimes I think it's a word that is way overused. Um, and is everything awesome to somebody? So when I'm reading Neil's books, I flip through with this book of awesome. Every page, there's something that, that he's, he thinks is awesome or whatever. And I look at it and I think some of it isn't really so awesome. But maybe awesome really is something that's actually in the eye of the beholder. It's, it's just something there that uh, matters to someone. So how does awesome, where does it come from? So I decided that awesome is actually something that is created and it's an opportunity for us to create something awesome. So I'm a huge sports fan. Um, you'll see him behind me here. I have all kinds of Toronto Maple Leaf pictures. Um, you know, the fact that I've been in this insurance business for 40 years plus will tell you that uh, I was actually alive when the Leafs won the cup last, which was 1967. Um, I have been a Leaf fan my entire life. I played hockey, I watched hockey, I lived hockey, still do. <laughs> Not as, it's different, but I still do. I was even watching it in uh, July and August and September, which was kind of weird. But one of the things that I think is awesome is when a couple of the Leafs, say Mitch Marner and Austin Matthews, um, make incredible plays, a, a tic-tac-toe passing play and a, a great goal. And sometimes it looks like that puck is attached to their stick. Like they just have so much talent and ability. To me, that is something that's incredibly awesome. But about a, a little bit more than a year ago, um, our Toronto Raptors won the NBA championship. Uh, there were some, I don't know how many uh, hundreds of thousands of people in the streets of Toronto celebrating when the Raptors won. And listen, I was on the bandwagon with everybody else, I did not venture downtown. Um, but to me, that wasn't, it wasn't awesome. It was great, but it was not the same as if the Leafs had won the Stanley Cup. To me, that would have been a whole different game. But does that mean that the Raptors winning wasn't awesome? Absolutely not. There's some friends that I have and, and a gentleman even in the office here who is a Raptors fan as much as I'm a Leafs fan. And it was crazy for him. It was awesome for him. We had people from this office venture downtown uh, to celebrate. Um, I didn't go, but that doesn't mean that it's any, any less awesome. So there really is no right or wrong when it comes to saying what's awesome. It's a choice. What's awesome to you and what's awesome to me can be completely different things, 
but still very, very awesome. So what if we, on a daily basis, went out of our way to try to create awesome, to create, create awesome in our own lives, but also to create awesome in other people's lives? Um, Pat mentioned when she was reading a little bit about my bio, one of the things that I love doing is mentoring and helping people uh, become the best version of themselves. Not who I want them to be, but to help them to be the best that they can be. So one of the things that, one of the words that I like to use is intentional. So every day I try to intentionally create awesome somewhere. So a few years ago, I created a logo and, uh, and put some words around this logo. I'm gonna share the screen here um, because these are words that I actually use to see if I can get this here. There we go, does that come up on the screen? Yeah, okay. So you'll see the create awesome in the middle, but around the outside, I have seven words, goals, giving, kindness, gratitude, purpose, courage, and legacy. These are all important words. They mean different things to different people. So I'm just gonna lose the share, the share there. There we go. Um, so I wanna talk a little bit about these seven words. So first of all, why seven words? Well, up until about a month ago, I only had five words because I thought, well, you know, Monday to Friday, we've got five, five days, so there you go. Um, and I got thinking one day that, you know what, there's actually seven days in the week. I need to come up with two more important words. So that's how we've ended up with seven. So when I talk about being intentional, it means that you have to actually take time and think. So one of the things that I do a lot is I journal. And how many, how many people in the, in the room here today actually do take some time to journal and, and uh, think about that any day? Anybody? So I've been journaling for years. Uh, more intensely, I'm going to say, over the last probably five. And it's changed my life. And, and I'm going to explain a little bit as to why that's, why that's happened. Um, so I want to talk about these seven words and a little bit of why these words are important and what they can actually do to improve our lives and to improve the lives of those around us. So, so the first word that I think you have to start with is goals. And uh, I've always been a, a goal-oriented person, even, even growing up uh, as a kid, I always had goals. Um, but over the years, I've learned from a scientific standpoint that it actually helps you achieve goals if you, first of all, yeah, if you have them, but you actually write them down. And, and, and I don't even mean typing them out on a laptop. I mean physically with your hand and a pen and paper, writing your goals. It, it, it's been proven that when you have a goal and you write it down, there's something between your hand and the pen and your heart and your head that take over. It's, it's, it's proven, okay? So every year I have a significant amount of goals and I write them down. Not only that, but I actually monitor them as the year goes on. And I have kind of forms that I use to do all this. I know I sound kind of crazy, right? Um, but that's okay. Um, goals make you have a direction for your life, okay? The number two word that I, that I really use a lot in my life is give. When I talk about giving, I don't necessarily, when people talk about giving, they think, oh, you know, I'm going to give money or whatever. It's not just about money. It's about thoughts. It's about time. It's about energy. It could be a text. It could be a phone call. It could be anything that you're giving to someone else. And I really firmly believe that the, one of the keys to giving is to give with absolutely no expectation of getting anything back. It's not a if I do this for you, I'm going to get something back. You just give because you give. And it's just, like I say, it doesn't have to be money. It can be a million different things. Sometimes it can be just a smile. And, and someone these days, let's face it, the world's a bit of a crazy place. Sometimes right now, a smile and, and all the rest of it, even though you, you, know, you might have a mask, so it might not be noticeable, uh, you can see a smile in your eyes. And I firmly believe that. Number three word is kindness. Uh, 
again, these days, you know, there's so many people that are struggling and being kind, I think, is something that um, gets kind of lost. We get lost in our own world, our own struggles, our own um, shortcomings. Um, kindness is something that on a daily basis, if we can do something to help someone else's life, it's a good thing. How do you feel when, when you give? How do you feel when you support a, a charity or you do something? It makes you feel good. And inside your, your being, it creates uh, chemicals in your head and, and in your body that actually are create a happiness, if you will. And <clears throat> excuse me. So kindness is one of those things that, again, intentionally every day, if we did one thing, two things, it, it has a tendency to mul multiply over time. Gratitude, word number four. Um, you know, these days, like I, I comment, you know, it's it's tough, and and some people have, find it tougher than others. Um, but even saying that, there's always something to be thankful for. Uh, sometimes you have to hunt for it. There's some days when, yeah, it maybe just doesn't feel the same as as any other day. Um, but there's always something that we should be thankful for. Um, at the office here, you know, back in March, we sent uh, we sent everybody home. And uh, we have about 75, 80 employees and uh, they all went home. And I'll be honest with you, I came to the office every day and uh, there was only a handful of us here, but I was very grateful that first of all, I didn't have to work from home because I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure how I would have been able to deal with that. I like to get up and go out to work. And so I was very, very grateful that I was able to do that. Um, and at the same time, kept all our staff safe. Uh, number five, purpose. They say that there's two significant days of your life. First of all, the day that you're born, in my case, a few years ago. Um, the second day that they say is the most important day of your life is you figure out why. Why were you born? Huge question, right? Very, very deep question. And this comes down to finding what your purpose is in your life. Um, yes, you know what? I've been an insurance guy for uh, March will be 43 years. Kind of crazy, to be honest with you. Um, but I don't see insurance as my purpose. My insurance for me is a vehicle. It's what I do, but it's not who I am. But I use that vehicle to uh, build relationships. I use it to create awesome for my clients. Uh, yes, I have clients and, and we do the insurance business. There's no question. That's, that's, that's kind of my, my vehicle. And uh, the purpose really is what do you get out of it? What's your, what's your clients? What do your relationships get out of it? For me, it is about the relationship um, as opposed to the business itself, if you will. The next word is courage. This is a word that I think this year has become uh, even more important because we've had to face things that we have never, ever faced before. We've had fears, we've had anxieties. Um, you know, a year ago, nobody had ever even heard of the word COVID. And, uh, you know, a few of you were talking about trips you were on last year. I was on a cruise actually uh, in the middle of February this year. They had already started sanitizing hands and all the rest of it. Um, it hadn't really come out as to what was going on, to be honest with you, but we were pretty much one of the last cruise ships out there. Um, so it takes courage to live on a daily basis. But if you don't think about it, sometimes the fears can kind of take over. And sometimes the fears, I'm gonna say, are more in your head than they are reality. And uh, it's one of the things right now that people do fear, people that have been at home. I know people that have been at home since March and they don't wanna go out. They don't uh, feel safe going out. And there's no right or wrong here, I get that. But sometimes you have to face your fears. Sometimes you have to stand up and say, you know what, I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna be safe. I'm gonna do what I need to do for me to make me feel better. Um, so courage is a huge, huge thing. I think that um, we've needed to grasp onto this year, probably more so than almost any other year. And the last word that um, I kind of focus on is legacy. And uh, I think as you get older, legacy becomes more important. 
And when I was younger, you know, legacy, it seemed like it was just something way, way off. It really didn't matter a whole lot. Um, but, you know, the fact is this, is that I'm a son. I'm a brother. I'm a father. I'm a husband. I'm a Papa D. I have the three best grandkids going. Um, I want to provide a legacy. I want my life to matter to some someone somewhere um, so that when I am gone, hopefully not for quite a few years yet, that somebody might just even say, oh yeah, I remember him. He was not a bad guy. And, or he, he left something. Maybe my grandkids will have something to remember me by for years and years and years. But legacy sometimes doesn't kick in till, till later in life. And, and I get that. My uh, mother-in-law passed away about six years ago. A wonderful lady in the city of London, highly respected. Um, and was involved in very many boards, Western uh, University, and the outpouring of love for the family after she passed away taught me a lot about legacy. It taught me that it matters. And uh, as much as you know, we hated obviously to see her go. Um, she she left a, a legacy that was impeccable, and I could be only so fortunate to leave a le legacy fraction of what she did. Um, but when she passed away, it actually helped me understand that it's important, that it actually does matter. So what do I do here? So I created my own journals. I talked to you about journaling. I write a lot. Uh, some days I'll write a page. Some days I'll write five pages. Um, most mornings, uh, about 7 a.m., you can see me down at the uh, Starbucks, down at uh, Leslie and Stackhouse. They have my table there. Um, I'll be honest with you, when their stores and restaurants were all closed for a while, I felt a little bit out of sorts because my I couldn't use my table. Really, was it, it felt weird. I try not to come into the office because when you come into the office, you get distracted. And uh, that just takes away from the whole time. So I spend the better part of an hour most mornings, um, my journal, my Vente Americano, and, and I'd use these seven words to think, okay? And daily, I don't necessarily think of every word, but I do think of them in a certain order, which helps me um, grasp onto life, to be honest with you. So I actually created my own journals and uh, I'll talk a little bit about it, but this is, can't really see it a whole lot, but I've got the logo on the front and I have, whoops, have some other ones here. Um, you can get intentional about some of these words and about some of these things, I can absolutely guarantee that it's going to make a difference in your life. Because now we're not just floating through, we're not just dealing um, with things as they come, we actually are being intentional about planning our life. Listen, things hit us all the time, like I say, that, that we don't really know. COVID, a year ago, we didn't know it existed. Um, so we've all had to adjust. We've all had to now do Zoom meetings. You know, we've, we all have a million Zoom meetings all the time, which are great. And, and, and it's better than not, but it's different. And it's not the same as it used to be, but it's still okay. We still have 25, 30 people in the room here today. And we're, we're being a network. We're being a, a group to support each other. And I think that's a huge, huge thing. So there's a, a gentleman, uh, he passed away a few years ago in the, in the U.S. His name was Jim Rohn. And uh, he's a, a leader, a, a very, very powerful man in the U.S. when it comes to leadership and did all kinds of seminars, wrote a gazillion books. And he has one comment here. And, and he says, if you don't like where you are, move. You're not a tree. And sometimes I think we get stuck. You know, right now, I think a lot of people feel stuck because of COVID. We're stuck at home. We're stuck maybe with our family at home uh, all the time. We're not used to that. I'm not sure we're made for that. Um, but there are things that we can do to actively change that. And uh, so one of the things I want to do today is I have, I buy these journals and uh, I'm actually... Uh, the ones that I have left right now only have five words because recently I added the words goals and I added the word courage. And I think that came out of this year. I have 
about uh, 20 or 25 journals uh, left that have the five words um, that I would like to open up to you guys if you would like a copy. Okay, so um, what I'm going to ask you to do if you want one, and I have, there's white ones, which I kind of got uh, more for ladies. It's a little bit lighter. You can keep in your purse. The other one's a hard cover. I'm going to give you my email address. If you send me your email or send me your address and your name, I will mail you a copy of the journal. Okay. And you can start your, what I call your journey in journaling. Um, it can make a difference. And I'm convinced that it's, cha it's changed my life. Absolutely no question. And it's helped me survive. It's helped me survive this year. It's helped me survive a lot of things. And, but it also helps you get creative. Sometimes I've, I've thought of stuff that I never would have thought of if I don't take the time to, to sit. Sometimes I think we're busy being busy and we all get into that, right? We all get how many emails a day? We're busy with a hundred emails or whatever. Um, it's nice just to get away from that and actually sit and think. And I think you'll find that you'll be more productive. You'll be calmer, to be honest with you. And you actually probably will come up with some very cool ideas. Um, this whole uh, journal thing, to be honest with you, came out of me journaling. The whole create awesome thing, the words, the whatever. Um, you know, I, I, I see this as part of my purpose, if you will. Uh, I don't go visit a client without taking them a book or a journal or something like that. It's my way of spreading maybe some hope, maybe some whatever. Um, so I'll, I'll give you my email if you have a, a pen and paper and maybe we can get it out later. I don't know if you do minutes from these things, but um, it's D as in Doug Bundock, B-U-N-D-O-C-K at B-K-I-F-G.com. And if you email me your name and your address, I will uh, send a journal off to you and uh, would love to do that for you. Um, yesterday I was... I get a, an email every day and it's a thought for today that comes in and sometimes they're okay and sometimes eh, they don't mean anything. Yesterday I thought was appropriate and I thought I would share it at the end here today and it's called, it says giving is receiving. It says we live in a time of take, 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 something for nothing, buy one, get one free. The truth of the matter is that simply by giving, I'll receive all that I need. Giving is receiving. Today, let me find a way to give unconditionally and with love. Give a smile, give a word of appreciation, give a thought of good wishes, give your cooperation for a task. Make today a giving, sorry, make today a day of giving and tomorrow you will receive the fruit. I just thought it kind of fits right in with kind of my whole process, to be honest with you. Um, I... Uh, been, like I said, I've been journaling for many, many years, and I would encourage you to give it a shot. Make a commitment to do a 30-day for a month and see, see what it does. See if it does anything. I would be surprised if it doesn't, um, but I would leave that up to you, of course. So um, I want to thank you for uh, the opportunity today to speak. Um, Courtney mentioned this to me uh, a couple of months ago and I thought, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. And all of a sudden I thought it seemed like a long way off and all of a sudden it's November. So um, <laughs> I do thank you for, for your time and uh, look forward to, if you want to send me an email, I'd be more than happy to, to drop one of these in the mail to you and uh, wish you the very best. This is a, a crazy year. Uh, we're all surviving and um, let's uh, continue to survive. Thanks, Doug. And I appreciate you uh, spending time with us this morning and reminding us that we do have to take time to stop and uh, experience. This year has been a bit crazy. I know in the chat, somebody wrote, it feels like uh, 10 years since COVID started, not just uh, under a year. And yet we seem to be sliding into the end of the year, though. I can't believe it's November already. So uh, I don't know how that happened, but uh, <laughs> here we are. Exactly. Um, you also made me think of our awesome foundation, actually. Um, we have something uh, called the New Market Awesome Foundation. That's um, It actually puts $1,000 cash towards an idea that helps youth in New Market. And okay. just if anybody's involved in youth charities, we've actually opened it up to charities that are doing work for youth um, to also apply for the grant simply online. 
um, because we know that a lot of the charities and not-for-profits are are having a hard time right now with fundraising. So the the trustees have opened it up to those um, those groups as well. So if you're involved with one and um, you're looking to uh, for some funding for your programs, all you have to do is is apply online. So that was another thing I I just thought of as you were talking. So. Um, and also thanks to Benson Kearley for um, sponsoring the breakfast today and also for your support of the chamber and our programs. We couldn't do what we do without um, our, our corporate sponsors. So thank you for that. Most welcome. And, and Doug, do you have anything else you wanted to just add quickly before we go into the networking? You know, I just, you're right when you talk about this year and, and it's, it's been a year like no other. And um, I'll be honest with you, sometimes I get tired of talking about it. Um, I just want, I want life to be normal. And this is, it's almost kind of starting to feel normal, which in itself is, is a little bit crazy. Um, but you know, we have to, we have to take the time to uh, be thankful uh, because as much as it's a mess and we don't know what, what's going on with numbers and, and all this kind of stuff. And there's, you know, obviously uh, between here and the US, you know, tens of thousands of people that lost their lives. So we can't, we can't disregard that. Uh, but at the same time, um, you know, we still have to take time to be thankful and grateful for what we have and for where we work. Um, you know, I've, I've been kind of in charge of our office as far as getting us through the whole COVID thing. And I'm pleased to be able to say that there isn't one person in our office that has got COVID and um, that to me that's that's the end goal and we have a huddle um, we used to have a huddle every day in the office we'd meet in our huddle room uh, 1123 every day and it was encouragement it was motivation it was about the numbers it was all kinds of different things and I said a long time ago to my team that I long for that day when we can all meet in the huddle room again <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, we have, a, we have lots of people and we have Zoom calls. We have one Zoom call, a uh, corporate Zoom call every Friday. And there's usually somewhere between 40 and 60 people on it, depending on who can come and who can't. And um, we've tried to keep everybody attached. And I think that's really, really important. But, um, you know, we just have to keep going day by day. And uh, we will get through this. There was some great news yesterday about uh, vaccines and stuff. Uh, for those of you who have any money in the market, the market went crazy yesterday on, on a good way. <laughs> Yay. Um, after a couple of weeks of, of craziness. Um, I'd like to think that, you know, with the vaccine coming and, and the election finally done in the U.S. that, I don't know, we're, I think we're ready for some normalcy, to be honest with you. And uh, I look forward to that. So um, I'll just kind of leave it like that. But uh, I think there's better better days ahead for sure. Perfect. Thanks, Doug. And I miss my team too, so I totally get that. I see them on Zoom, <laughs> but it's not the same. Nope. Um, Tyler, are you um, going to lead us through the networking piece or is that Jennifer? Yeah. Sure. Okay, yeah. perfect. Yeah, I'll, I'll lead everyone. Um, so I'm just gonna stop the recording here.